Ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, good morning. Today is July 31st, 2019. It's a Wednesday. It is the last day of the month. July is officially in the books, and we've got a workshop update for you guys. So, a bunch of pieces to show you. There's a couple of orders here. A majority of this is one order, and then I've got some other stuff. And this is probably, at least partially, going to be on the spray session. I don't think I've done, maybe I've done a frog. I've done a frog popper. Don't think I've done any other top water except for the Johnny Rat. I've done a few wake baits. Oh, yeah, okay. So, I've done some top waters, but I haven't done these super spooks before so i think i'm going to incorporate that into this week's um spray session for you guys in the meantime and again all of these are going to get repainted for one of my clients in the meantime we've got a bunch of stuff to show you guys i'm going to start with well, let's start with this frog this is a chart topper fun little pattern to spray got those jets and eyes in it the frog eyes dark into light back into a little bit darker on the tail it's primarily two colors with the red mouth it is a fluorescent neon green and a true wicked jet black detail little red on the throat going into the mouth and a quick dip into kbs these are fun love i can i could do frogs all day they're so much fun to do We've got a deep summer crappie, yellow eyes, fluorescent orange on the chest, that moss green on its back, also black, because when you look at a crappie in the water, it actually has a black tint to it, so the detail magenta blacks and other different types of tones to soften it, it's, this is more of a pattern reactionary type deal, so you want that profile, you want that real cool profile on these baits. Now this square bill, this 2.5, is probably one of my oldest patterns. It's the very first, oh gosh, I don't even know what year that would have been, 2015, 14? It's been a few years when the website started out. Um, this is the Patriot. It is in a, a, it's got the shad dot on it, but it's that's about all that really looks like a shad on this. It is the patriotic colors of red, white, and blue, America's flag colors. And the colors are actually flag red, flag blue, and then the titanium white. The interesting thing about this particular bait is that everything that looks like what might be going on is probably not. So it looks like maybe there's white on the belly as a primer. There's not. It's red. So I did red on the belly as a primer, and I did white on the top as a primer, and then I oversprayed blue. And then on the belly, I oversprayed white. So that's why you get that really cool threading effect with stuff like this. So I encourage everybody out there, whether you're watching my spray sessions or my videos or my updates, I try and give you guys some useful tips and information in all of this. So just try different things. Instead of trying a white primer on your base, try something different and then try shooting different colors over that. Just take a couple of old beat up practice baits and use that uh, the stars on these are hand cut there's five stars on here because this patriot is more important than a four star general no that's not it um just what fits on the bait got five stars and this is going out to the buffalo man actually a lot of this stuff is we've got a really cool dinger holographic s thread fin and it's a very bright thread fin you know me and my colors. I do love them. A little bit more toned down citrus gill. Citrus because of that beautiful orange. Look at how it shines. That is what iridescent and pearl paints together will do for you. There's an iridescent red. Iridescent? Yeah. It's a fictionary word that I just made up. Iridescent red and a tangerine pearl orange mixed together to get this color with just like a drop of pearl white to soften it a little bit. And very cool. On the base layers it's got a little plum on the on the tail a little plum on the face the eyes are hand done hand sprayed and dotted while they're on the bait so the eyes are actually inserted before i spray on stuff like this and then i normally do the uh the hand painted eyes on on a bait like this this is a mid diving you can pick it up at dinger 
Um, Cedar Run right now I think has got the shallow version of this. That's 65.8A is the shallow and 8B. I always screw up the terminology on that, but go check out Dinger and Cedar Run. That's where you can get these things at. And have fun with them because they're built really well. This is one of those blanks that I would recommend regardless. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a duo replica, obviously, but a very well-made one. This is a distressed crappie. These are fun to do as well because you can really see the, the red veins. And this is another one where I'm shooting red under everything else. No cats were harmed during this. I don't know. It's actually, this is probably dog fur. Um, I sterilize the room every single day. But then after, for some reason, once that clear coat dries, it is like a, a magnet and stuff just floats. So my apologies on that one. Sorry about that. It comes off. It's not attached to the bait. It's not stuck on the bait. It's not in the bait or the epoxy. Just every once in a while. Just like dust particles. Unfortunately, mine belongs to a Labrador. So you guys have got part of Casey fondly with this bait. So I've got, uh, again, you can see that little tangerine peeking through on the chest. And then up into a, a true titanium white into a lime green, into moss on the top, and you can see those red veins, hence the distressed title. Uh, this is also on the, most of these are on the website. You guys can check that out. And then some yellow eyes. Good rattle on these 2.5s. Love them, love them, love them, love them. Neon Purple Zombie. So the Zombie series has come roaring back. A lot of you guys have been asking for them. Super bright colors because we've had so much rain this year. So much rain, especially like the lakes will get a little bit stained, like tea color stained. But the rivers, Lord have mercy, Arkansas River is jacked up. The Spring River has been had a, had a stain on it all year. So electric colors, things that are going to attract fish, smallmouth especially, for some reason, love those bright colors. So... You guys have been asking more for stuff like this. And uh, I think this is that wired, um, is it Orif? I forget the, the name. You can pick this up on Amazon. I have a link in the description below on the uh, wire wrap that I use on this. But it, it gives a really cool false sense of depth. I also use this on my hot coal, which you're, you're going to see right behind this bait. Because it looks like a charcoal briquette that's just been on fire a little bit too long. And this has got iridescent red in it. You can really see that, that color shift when I'm moving it in the light. But the depth is created by a dark color and then a light color shot over top of that while the mesh is still on the bait. That's where you get that really extravagant depth change or perception of depth change. And then some cool eyes with those. Now I've gotten these eyes from uh, from Schultz. I've gotten them from uh, from Dinger. I think has had them at one time or another. Cool eyes, um, and they also have a lot of reflectivity in them, which a lot of the eyes don't. Um, they normally have the little prism cards that they're stuck on. This is that Susquehanna craw in a wiggle wart. did the eyes a little bit differently on it and yes indeed that is a Russ Allen wicked stencil insane stencil Russ Allen's on that crawl wheel and I try and be out of the box so I do it a little bit differently because you really want that accent just a quick accent up into the green so if you really want to have a standout what I've done here is I've shot white and then come back over with the stencil again and shot red on top of the white. So you get a little bit of a, a defined line there, which I like. My buddy Greg's getting these. These are headed to New Mexico. Can also A lot of the baits that I shoot have a perception of depth in, the, in them. Let's see if I can speak at 7 o'clock in the morning. This is just that three color fade with the black accenting shot real light. Those accents, you don't want to just blast paint onto that. You want a really low pressure. 
and then you, it looks like your looks like your um, segments are jumping off that bait, especially with fluorescent colors. Really gives it a cool contrast and that false sense of depth that looks like there's actually segments on the bottom and on the top. So fun, fun, fun. Got two of those. Got another set of these. Um, these are the snake heads. I've done a few of these now this week for customers. Snake heads, obviously, because of the eyes on them. Very, very cool. And then we've got some of that, that depth veining in it. So these baits, the primer color on this is black. And then you wrap the bait and then you shoot through your mesh white and then every other color that you shoot is angled so if i shoot white directly once that black is dry so think about it like this completely covered tape it up shoot it in a in a black black as black can be blacker than these gloves so like that wicked detail jet black is a really dark it's darker than the mars black that you get let that dry and then wrap your bait put white on it shoot white completely white at it you know not angle it but just right at the bait cover that let that dry and then angle all of your other colors so when i say angle basically my bait is like this and the airbrush is shooting across the top of the back so i'm not i don't have the airbrush let's say this is the nozzle i'm not putting it right down at it i'm angling it so it shoots across the back of the bait and that's how you get these cool effects that's how you do it and it's even more prominent on this one i got a couple of requests for these so i'm gonna have to make a couple more of this color um, but you can really see the depth and this is not crackle paint this is all done with an airbrush to give a false sense of of a depth on this bait very cool pattern obvious why they're called snake heads kind of looks like a a dried snake skin and then you get that really cool marbling effect and that's that's just practice you just enable to and it's wet on wet so on on something like this i'll spray the lighter colors first and then dump the darker colors on top of them so i'll have yellow and then i'll shoot red on the back while the yellow is still wet and that's how you get that really cool blending and you can shoot a little bit heavy you just have to be certain that you're not shooting so heavy and so much paint on there that it won't dry because if your paint doesn't dry especially if you're living in a place where there's a lot of humidity which is probably all over the u.s unless you're in alaska um, you're going to get issues with drying in the summertime our, our humidity has been staying right around 70 percent um, it was up at 78 percent and then on the days where it rains this is a japanese beetle on a holograph see that holograph coming through the paint a little bit and again some patterns pick up holographic um, underneath more than others do depends on how many layers I'm putting on it and a Lake Martin red I still love this color uh, on a square bill and on I would do it on an S as well this is one of the colors that was uh, kind of re-brought into the light a couple of years ago Takahiro Mori one with this color scheme on lake martin not this exact like he didn't do the anyways he, it was on lucky craft his was and these are pressed from lucky craft so hence the lake martin red and this is more of an iridescent red and this is one of those color color shifting colors with that shad dot black eyes those chrome black eyes i try and i try and do some different eyes on most of my baits just not to make it look plain jane you'll notice like on all the strike kings like all the eyes look like that just about all of them or like on the sixth sense all the eyes have big big pupils in them so most of your run-of-the-mill go to the store and buy a six or seven dollar lure are going to have plain eyes on them one of the things that we like to do as custom painters is give our customers something that the not only they haven't seen before but their fish haven't seen before either 
and uh, it is tried and true and yes it attracts the fishermen as well as the fish but i promise you guys these things catch fish i've gone way over i've got to get to work i got a lot to do today as usual but i always appreciate you guys every single time you check these videos out so again thanks so much from the bottom of my heart i appreciate your support thanks for subscribing to the channel thanks for showing me stuff i got the coolest i got to give a shout out real quick so there's a young man and i can say that because i'm older than you colin but there's a young man who has just gotten into the bait building business and lure designing and i really 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 wanted to reach out to him because he's been asking advice and and he's gotten on the brotherhood page that page right there go get a sticker go on facebook i know i'm all over the place go get a sticker from mike and garcia these guys are the real deal you know i'm on that page all the time as well i'm an admin there i really enjoy the page i love teaching just like garcia and, and mike ornstein do um colin george has just really gotten into painting and he's he's getting pretty proficient at it and he's asking a lot of questions and he's he's just got a good head on his shoulders and catches real big fish too and that young man just won first place in his local art craft fair so for his lures so for just starting out and getting a, a blue ribbon on your first fair competition congratulations absolutely congratulations here's the picture let's give him a round of applause so colin big shout out to you bro i hope you have a fantastic day and you guys keep painting keep painting keep creating happy casting we'll see you on the water